church how you doing today me too i don't have to preach and you should be doing great because you don't have to listen to me preach glory to god hey you may be seated mike time of reckoning time of reckoning okay church is over last week and one of the big things is people come dump in our dumpster illegally okay and they just fill it up so church is over and i'm getting ready to leave and there's some guy out there with the trailer and he's filling our dumpster and Huggins' dumpster. I'm thinking there should be some kind of fine, you know. Well, I look, and he looks kind of familiar. And he said, I get to do this because I had to listen to your sermon. <laughs> and I knew it wasn't the best sermon, so I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> But, but the, the way I'm thinking, the way I'm thinking, he said, what, why did he say get to dump it in the dumpster? Why? Why did he say? He listens to the sermon. If you listen to the sermon, wouldn't you think you know what the sermon is about? Am I right? Right? He said he had to listen to it. So, Mike, if you want to join, avoid the $50 to $100 fine, you better tell me what the sermon was about. <laughs> Ecclesiastical maneuvers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So here's how it's going to be, okay? Either he's going to pay the $5,100 fine or he's going to listen to the sermon today. Right? So, 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 Bob, you and Jay, keep him in the back when service is over. Keep him in the back. Don't let him leave. And he has to tell every one of you what the sermon was about today. Yep. Or it's a hundred dollar fine. So there you go. And we, I keep saying fifty to a hundred because 
at the, he, he did a great job at the bingo sale, but as a part of that, he had to pay $100 for a pie. And 110. So I'm figuring we're going to give him a little credit on that side of things. It was for the kids. Yeah, it was for the kids. That's true. Glory to God. Hey, uh, glad you're here. It's, it, we are a family of faith, brothers, sisters in Christ, and so uh, glad that you're here today. And uh, God is with us. He's working. And uh, I, hope that, I hope that you know that God is working in your life. God is working in your life. And part of that is you, are you aware, do you know how God is working in your life so you can cooperate with him is an important thing. Our flowers today uh, are given by Jackie Drake and by Steve Drake, uh, and they're given in loving memory of Paul Drake, uh, her husband, Steve's dad. His birthday uh, will be August the 17th this week. So uh, we're thankful for those flowers and how they beautify the sanctuary. Let me tell you what announcements. This is meetings week. This is a crazy busy week this week. Monday night, we have the Board of Trustees at 5. Uh, ministry team meets at 6. And our ministry team prepared for this meeting by basically everybody going out of town. So uh, <laughs> if you would like to volunteer for the ministry team meeting, you feel welcome to come join us because Dean and I are going to be dunking oreos and milk or something i don't know uh for ministry team meeting but so that's that tuesday it, you know, we got thursday i'll just cover them all thursday finance committee we really we need to meet things are happening and we did meet in july because it's so busy and so curious to see the finance committee how we're doing suzanne works hard and she's glad that we reminded her today that this that this week is Thursday, that Thursday's finance committee. We expect our reports and the administrative board is at 630. And these are important because we missed July. Tuesday, we need help if you're able to help. Tuesday is food bank day. Let me see if I can get it. Sorry. Well, hey, I don't know my phone. Look on your phone. What does it say weather is supposed to be? Hey, my, mine says that Tuesday is supposed to be 92. That, that, that is a, that's a, that's, let me tell you what, that's a blessing because it is hot. It is hot out there. And we pass out food. You need to be there between 9 and 930 to help get the food ready. That we they opened for the cars about 9:45 or 10 last month. It was over 400 people, uh, and and uh, it helps to have more people because when it's hot, sometimes people need to take breaks, and you need to take breaks. And if the more people are there, and we've we've had some of our youth coming too, and our youth are going to be in school. So please, if you're able to come join us at the rodeo grounds for the food distribution, your help is much needed, and, and we will very much appreciate it. Get there about 9. Hopefully, we can have the food ready to start being dished out uh, by 945. And uh, this is a good ministry. I, I can't tell you some of the conversations I had last time. I, I do traffic. If you're not very smart, they put you with traffic. So I don't know. I'm with traffic. So, uh, you know, but, but I, I wear a shirt that says prayer warriors, and I just can't tell you some of the conversations I had last time that were just so intriguing and really, really powerful opportunities for prayer and stuff off of that. So it's a good ministry. Uh, Wednesday morning, we have prayer. We can celebrate good times. That's my ringtone on my phone, by the way. Celebrate good times. Uh, because this past Wednesday, we had over 10 people at prayer. Double digits. So God's growing that. Praying together is a very powerful, important thing. We like to talk sometimes about, you know, how intense everything is in our country and all that. And it's an awesome time to come together to pray. Our youth are meeting this Wednesday night, and it's going to be sad because it's Micah's last time to be with us, although I need to negotiate the 27th, okay? So and if he can't come the 27th, I'm going to talk to one of you three. We're just, I mean, when you're desperate, you're desperate, okay? So glory to God. Uh, I don't know them or their names, but I need somebody to work with youth on Wednesday night. So uh, help us, Jesus. Glory to God. Uh, Bailey, maybe we'll, maybe talk. Yeah, we'll see. We're, we'll cover all our bases today. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, 
the youth meet uh, this week. The children don't start meeting until the 23rd, okay? So we, we, this will be our last one. This will be the 16th. So this is our last one before the children start to join us once again, and we have our more regular Wednesday nights, okay? Uh, Thursday mornings, Pastor Discipleship Bible Study. Thursday night, our praise team happens same time all of our other meetings. This Friday and Saturday is the rummage sale. <laughs> Lots of stuff over there. And uh, so we need help manning this, manning this Thursday and Friday. The benefits of this, the proceeds will be split between the backpack program, which is getting ready to ramp up in early September. 140 or so kids that got food last year and seeing how that goes this year. And then also camp for next year. We need to get ready for camp next year. We spent over $20,000 getting our kids to camp this year that we didn't know the price was going up. Appreciate everybody's generosity and gifts to get our kids to camp, but we know we got to start early thinking about it for next year. So uh, be mindful of that. And uh, so in, these are, it's a busy full week this week with all of this going on. Any other announcements that we need to make? Hey, bud, yes. Is, is that Thursday, is that August 22nd, or is, it, is that right? That's next week, right? This, for meetings. That says the 22nd. Well, obviously, if the that's 14th, yeah, it's wrong. So, so, sorry, it's the 16th. So it is the 16th this week. Uh, yeah, so it's this week. We already got it. Yeah, I don't think there is an August the 20, a Thursday, August 22nd. So it's this week. Thank you for noting that. Appreciate it. Uh, no other announcements that we need to make? Yes, Dean, I was like, you're sitting in the wrong spot. I knew, usually you always have one. So, yeah. <laughs> Celebrate Recovery happens on Tuesday night. I knew I missed one. I want to tell you, God's really working in this uh, ministry right now. If you want to come help serve the meal, or just be there to, to participate in this ministry, uh, celebrate recovery, meal at 6, worship at 7, and if you want to stay for small groups at 8, it, God's doing some good things in this ministry. It's a real blessing, and a live testimony is always a powerful, powerful thing. We like having a good turnout when somebody works to get here to show up. It's nice having more people here is a good thing. Call to worship today relates to reconciliation. How do you say the book we're studying? Uh, well, you're going to have to say at some point. Philemon. Philemon. Yeah. Philemon. Philemon. Yeah, that book. So that's one he picked for his first, first message is the one nobody knows how to say. All right? So, so it's going to be good, I'm telling you. Uh, but, but preparation for that. I thank my God for you making mention of you always in my prayers. I thank God for your love, for your faith toward the Lord and toward all the saints. Now we give thanks to God who has reconciled us to himself through the blood of Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. There's some good things to process in that right there, and you're going to lead us into some more of that in just a moment. We come to a time where we uh, lift up our prayers before the Lord. Uh, this past week, to let you know, last Sunday morning, I asked Candy, I said, how's Gil's brother doing? And she said, man, he's doing good, and Gil's coming home on Tuesday. Tuesday morning, came up. Fortunately, I was standing by Nancy, so I got the news. But, but on Tuesday morning, she said, Gil's brother's probably not going to live through the day. And so it turned that fast, and Gil's brother passed before noon on Tuesday. And so he had been ill, but I didn't, wasn't expected to be unto death, and he, everything was looking really good last Sunday. And so Gil's brother, Preston, passed on Tuesday, and that, that really been heavy on a lot of us all week, praying for him, praying for him as he deals with all the family stuff. If you know Gil, you know how much he looked up to his brother. You know how much he loved his brother. And so it's been a, it's been a pretty heavy week for him. Uh, the latest report I got on uh, Diane Salton was doing some better. 
Uh, I haven't heard from him the last several days, but we want to continue to lift up Aaron and Diane because last Sunday it was pretty intense. But the reports earlier in the week were getting better, and then I kind of got lost in the Gill thing and hadn't responded to a few of my texts. So we'll, we'll see. Aaron, Diane, if you're watching, we're praying for you. Uh, other other prayers that you want to just that you want to mention before the Lord today? Yeah, Tim Bland went home yesterday, so he's back home. He'll start rehab and physical therapy, so there's progress being made with his knee, and we're very thankful for that. And then Chris also has injured his knee uh, and is limping along. So father and son on that. Rebecca, many of you know we've been praying for Rebecca, Joyce's daughter. Last chemo tomorrow and then recovers and starts radiation. It's really intense. Please, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're keeping up with her on Facebook, if you see her there, please let her know we're praying. Reach out to her. And uh, God is using her in a ministry, too, as she walks through this. There's a lot of people following her and walking her through this. Rebecca, we love you, and uh, we're praying for you in these days uh, and trusting for God's healing, his strength, your journey in that. So uh, lots of stuff going on. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and do the prayer just a little bit different, uh, maybe than lifting these concerns up. We're aware of these. Please take them to the Lord in your prayers, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, it's our heart's desire to exalt you in all that we do. We want to exalt you in our worship. We want to exalt you by the way that we live in each moment of every day. We want our lives to bring you glory. So, Almighty God... Father God, I want to exalt you in this moment as I pray. You are Elohim. You are our strong creator God. You are Jehovah, the God who desires relationship with us. You are Adonai, the God who rules and reigns. And we declare, you reign, God. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. You are Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. You are Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. You are Jehovah Saba, the king of angel, the God of angel armies. You are Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. You are Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace and our wholeness. And Jehovah Shalom, I pray for your peace, your wholeness over each person who hears my voice in this moment and in these days. I pray your peace, your wholeness over our families, over our homes. Over our church, we pray your peace, your shalom, over our schools and our community, over our nation. And we rejoice that we can worship you, Jehovah Shalom. You are the God who hears our prayers. You are our exceedingly great reward and our joy. You are our fortress. You are our keeper. You are our sustainer. You are the Lord mighty in battle. You're the maker, you are the maker of heaven and earth. You're the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You set it all in motion, and when it's time for it to stop, you will be the one that brings it to its conclusion. You are our rock and our fortress. You are our Redeemer. You have paid the price, the dear price of your son's blood and life, to buy us back from the kingdom of darkness, to deliver us from our sin and the consequences of our sin. You are our sun and our shield. You are the potter, and we are the clay. So remold us and make us into the image of your Son, that we may live our lives for your kingdom and your glory. You are the Lord who is faithful. You are steadfast, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are Emmanuel, God with us. Even in this moment and every moment of every day, you are Emmanuel, God with us. You are love. The very essence of your being is love. Love is who you are and what you are and what you do. God is love. You love us so much that you sent your son to be the way, the truth, and the life for us, to be the expiation for our sin. You sent your son to be the light of the world. Now you call us to live in such a way that we shine his light day by day as we live our lives. You sent your son to be the resurrection in the life. He is the vine, and we are the branches. And by living and abiding in him, we are called to bear much fruit, eternal fruit, fruit that will last. So, Lord, we want to live our lives in such a way that exalts you and brings you glory. We want to know you better and better because eternal life is knowing you 
the only true God, and knowing your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent into the world to save sinners like us. We want to glorify you by the way that we live each moment of each day as a way of expressing our love, our gratitude, and our worship to you. Lead us toward your kingdom purposes by your Holy Spirit and for your glory. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. And now we pray together as God, as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. We have the opportunity to worship the Lord today together. Let's lift our voices, lift our hearts in praise. I was
God is good. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, We don't pass an offering plate. We have a basket at the back. And so if you'd like to give as a part of your worship, you can do that. We also praise the Lord for those that give online. That's available. For those of you watching online, we welcome you today. We're so thankful for you and those faithful ones that watch online. And we appreciate those who also give online to support the ministry of our church. And there's a lot going on. Uh, And so I pray that you'll be faithful on that side, and God is most certainly faithful to us. What what a blessing. Uh, And so we keep walking in faithfulness of the Lord and his provision and then trying to be faithful stewards of what God has provided. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, it's been uh, been interesting because Mike and I didn't know each other in May, didn't even know each other existed in May. Uh, It was somewhere around middle May, though, that began to dialogue about him coming on here I was looking forward to maybe an in, intern being here three months, but then he has uh, service, what do you call it, that active deal. I'm really good at all your information. You know, but I still can't say National Guard. He had to do th- three weeks of National Guard in the month of June, so he couldn't get here until a little bit later in June. So we've had pretty pretty crazy two, two months together. Really been awesome, a real blessing, and God has really connected our hearts uh, in an awesome way. Uh, you and Bailey just kind of getting started dating, right? Huh? Yeah. And Bailey, he is a, he will, he, I'm not, 
He's older and he is a junior at Letourneau. She's younger and she's a senior at ETBU. <laughs> they always say, you know, guys are slow. <laughs> and my, amen, yeah. yeah. But you got, you got to slow down, wait on the good things. You know, there you go. Uh, but, but another thing is, you know, this will be, it's Micah's first sermon is they've started uh, dating. It was really praying that Bailey could be here. And I appreciate your boldness on asking. And that was good. And I appreciate Corey. Uh, they're going to be interns at Moberly uh, Baptist this fall uh, and working with college and young adults and excited for y'all in that ministry together and what God's going to do there. Uh, but we've been very blessed uh, by Micah. Micah, if you'll go ahead and start uh, coming up. But I've been very, very thankful for that and seeing God work just in Micah's life a bunch of different ways over, over these days. And so it's, it's very exciting. And then, you know, there'll be a day you, you can think, man, I, I was there that first sermon. You know, you three guys, tell me y'all's names. I'll need your phone numbers later because we're looking for somebody to work with their youth now. So, uh, but, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, but so tell me y'all's names real quick. And cold. Well, hey, you know, it's kind of a bummer that you're here because the reason why it's a bummer, the reason, no, the reason why it's a bummer you're here is because if he messes up, so he could walk out and nobody would ever know, Bailey will love him and forgive him no matter what. But now if he messes up, it goes with him, okay? But, but if he messes up, I, I'm known for giving dollars. I have $2 bills for all of you to not sip, spread anything, okay? But the good news is, is I'm very confident in our God. And part of my calling was that God used Balaam's donkey. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, then I might have a chance. And he's way beyond that and, and excited uh, for him and the word that God has put on his heart. And uh, Lord, it's just, a, it's just a blessing to lift up Micah today and know the, the word that you put in his heart, how he loves you, how he knows you, how you're working in his life in these days is a beautiful thing. And so just let your anointing be on him. Let your peace rain down on him, Father God, and just uh, let him know he's in a place where he's loved, uh, even by his three amigos, Father God. Lord, just uh, we know you love us, and so we're in that place. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Mike, take notes, brother. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Um, Man, I have been just super, just covered in prayer. And so my, my mind and soul are at rest, but my body has just been shaking like all, <laughs> all week, especially this morning. And uh, I know Pastor Bud loves talking about the different capacities that we have. But if, you know, my capacity was a pipe, it'd be shaking right now, like really bad. So I, I'm really stressed out and really nervous, but I know... Like, I, like Bud said, that, uh, that we work for a, a great God. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in. Um, it'll be a kind of a different style. It's called expository teaching, where you go verse by verse. But this morning, we're going to be in the epistle uh, to Philemon. And uh, it's a really, really small book. And if you uh, have trouble finding it in the front of your Bibles, there's a cool little thing called a table of contents. Um, and that should give you a good page number. And uh, yeah, although it's small, don't let its size fool you. It is, it is a uh, very explosive uh, book of the Bible. So um, as we dive in, I want you to recall Pastor Bud's past sermons, right? So think about your toolbox, the prayers, uh, generations, spiritual fathers, as they will be very heavily in apparent. And I'm very thankful for those messages that Bud has made as it paved the way for when we read this together, some things will jump out um, a, a little better. So uh, right away, I want you to think about the word reconciliation, right? It's an accounting term, and it means to reconcile accounts to ensure that two different accounts that are at odds are made right and restored. So this epistle to Philemon is exactly about that, right? And a little bit of a background about this letter is that it's one of Paul's letters um, during his imprison, uh, imprison, uh, imprisonment. So uh, Paul's co-worker, Epaphras, who we'll, you'll, we'll see at the very, very end of the letter, 
right, started a community in Colossae. So in that community was Philemon, who owned many slaves, right, as all Roman patriarchs did at the time. Uh, one of these slaves named Onesimus had run away and found Paul, but with Paul he had found Christ. And so Paul writes this letter, right, to get Philemon to forgive Onesimus and bring him back and embrace him, uh, not as a slave, but as a brother. So we're going to jump right into uh, verse 1 through 3. Uh, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Apphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your house. Uh, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. So right away, we're introduced to Philemon and um, Apphia, who is said to be his wife, and then Archippus who's somebody that Paul has worked with before to help establish the church in Colossae. So right away, we're already getting loaded with different characters. This is a personal letter to Philemon, but he's including other people, right, so that they would read it as well. And um, it's also addressed to the church that meets his home. So uh, basically, they'll, they'll be reading this in front of a church, which was normal uh, for that time. So, um, verse 4, I always thank my God when I mention you in my prayers. That doesn't remind you of Bud. I'm not sure what will. And then um, verse 5, because I hear of your love for all the saints and the faith that you have in Lord Jesus. So he's kind of building uh, Philemon up a little bit, but Philemon was already known to be a very, very incredible guy who really served well for Jesus uh, or worked well for Jesus. Verse 6, I pray that you, your participation, and I want to uh, note that word participation. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, that your participation in the faith may become effective through knowing every good thing that is in us for the glory of Christ. So this, right away, we've already got another prayer for your toolbox, right? So pray that you would be effective. And then um, if you throw that in with your Ephesians 3, 14, the strengthening of the inner man, and then Colossians 1, 9, um, filled with all the knowledge of his will, walking worthy of God, Start to build your to, uh, toolbox. But I want to go back to that word, um, uh, participation. Um, some of your Bibles may read something like partnership or uh, mutual participation. This here is the Greek word koinonia, meaning sharing or sharing in and mutual participation. As they receive something together and share in it. Right, becoming partners. So Paul is writing that um, all followers, right, our koinonia, our partners who share in the gift of God's love and grace. So koinonia isn't something you just think about. It's something that you do. So verse 7, For I have great joy and encouragement from your love because the heart of the saints have been refreshed through you, brother. Right? Look at the word refreshed. When we, uh, we will see that again later in this letter. Refreshed is not, he's not being refreshed by a gift, right? When, someone, when he's refreshed, it's not by the gift itself. Um, but he's being refreshed by seeing the fruit of the Holy Spirit produced through him. Not because any gift would benefit Paul, but the fruit of the Spirit, uh, Spirit benefits him. For his benefit, the act of good itself is what's refreshing. Uh, verse 8, 8 and 9. For this reason, although I have great boldness in Christ to command you to do what is right, I appeal to you instead on the basis of love. I, Paul, as an elderly man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. Right? So this is... Um, something a, a pastor of mine liked to call 
graceful arm twisting. And you will see that a lot throughout this message. Um, Paul has the authority as a, an apostle to command him, right? But instead, um, he appeals. Additionally, right around here, people um, ask, why didn't, God, or why didn't Paul, with his authority as an apostle, seize the opportunity to condemn slavery? Well, throughout this letter, I want you to, as we're reading it, I want you to think about how um, that Christianity is not some revolutionary idea where you rebel or um, you're not undermining, but instead you're serving, right? Um, and then verse 10, um, appeal to you for my son, Onesimus, I became his father while I was in change. Hello, church. <laughs> so spiritual fathers he was a spiritual father right remember first corinthians 4 15 a couple of sundays ago for you have many instructors but few spiritual fathers paul is claiming spiritual fatherhood over anisimus meaning he is in a developing and growing relationship with love and concern and we'll see later that it might even be costly. He is giving time, prayer, and plans to check in. So Paul wants Onesimus, but knows Onesimus and Philemon have to be reconciled if they both say that they're followers of Jesus. So verse 11 and 12, Paul uses a play on words here because Onesimus in Greek literally means useful, right? And Paul also shows how invested he is. So verse 11, once he was useless to you, but now he is useful both to you and to me. I am sending him back to you. I am sending my very own heart, right? So notice as we move on to um, uh, verse 13 and 14, right? I wanted to keep him with me so that in my imprisonment, imprisonment for the gospel, he might serve in your place. But I didn't want to do anything without your consent, so that your good deed might not be out of obligation, but out of your own free will. So a chance that he could have his own chance of showing the fruits of his spirit in his life as he has a life in Christ. So right around there, right? He's saying that Onesimus was an effective stand-in right, for Philemon's absence. It's a little bit more of that graceful arm twist thing. Um, but notice when we, when we transition to verse 17, if you pay very close attention, you can see the Holy Spirit starting to pick up in between the lines. right? So verse 15 for perhaps this is why he was separated from you for a brief time, so that you might get him back permanently, right? This plight must have served God's purpose. Verse 16, as we continue to read through these lines, um, I want you to ask yourself, right, does this sound like Christ? No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a dearly loved brother, he is especially so to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord, right? William Barclay puts it like this. When both are in Christ, human social grades and castes become irrelevant. They melt away. They cease to matter. If the master treats as Christ would and the slave serves as Christ would, their relationship would not depend on any human classification as they are both found in Christ. And remember, right, this is under Roman law. So Philemon has every right when he receives Onesimus back to brand him or even kill him, right? This is, this, this is also during the time when Nero, who was the emperor of Rome at the time, would take Christians and stake them and then light them on fire to light his path. And Paul was writing 
uh, in Romans, right, that we, um, that we should submit to our governments, right? So while this is going on, the killing, Onesimus, it wouldn't have been questioned if Philemon had killed Onesimus because that was right under, under the Roman law. So this is more than just kindness. It's complete of him uh, bringing Onesimus back as more than uh, a slave but a brother. It's more than kindness. It's completely upsetting the status quo of the Roman social order. Verse 17. So if you consider me a partner, koinonia, welcome him as you would me. Um, Again, that word, koinonia, means sharing, m mutual participation. So again, does this sound like Christ? Treat him as myself, right? Verse 18, and if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. Does that sound like Christ? Right? Charge that to my account. Paul is stepping in, like Christ, to correct the balance at odds. He's standing in the gap. So verse 19, it goes even further. Right, I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it, not to mention to you that you owe me even your very self. Right? Does that sound like Christ? Paul's message here is still the gospel, but this time it's being acted out. So 2 Corinthians 5.19, Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. How do we live that out? How do we act that out? So to reconcile... Paul is standing in the gap, paying the cost, so that Onesimus and Philemon would be reconciled to each other, not counting their trespasses against one another. So this is more than just a legal transaction of balancing something at odds, but about koinonia, sharing in, the mutual participation. We are all before God in the same need for forgiveness. The ground is level before the cross. Colossians 3.11 says, Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. The hurts, the habits, the hang-ups, those you serve, the wicked, the righteous, the fools, the wise, the master and the slave are level before the cross. We are Christ's family. Right? What, is that, like, what does that mean for us to be Christ's family, to be level before the cross? If you were Pentecostals right now, you would be running up and down this aisle. But, man, isn't that great news? Like, but, yeah, so let's, let's slow down a bit and, and jump, jump back into <laughs> verse 20. Verse 20, yes, brother, may I benefit from you in the Lord, refresh, that's, that word again, refresh, refresh my heart in Christ, right? It will be a refreshment. It's that word again. The act of good itself is refreshing, not the gift itself. Even think about Christ as the living water. He is refreshed by Philemon acting as Christ would, Christ living water flowing through Philemon. Verse 21, since I am confident of your obedience. I am writing to you knowing that you will do uh, you will do even more than I say, right? More graceful arm twisting, right? And if your spiritual gift is encouragement, steal this verse. You have always done it, obedience, right? And I'll know you'll do more overwhelmingly and abundantly. Verse 22. Meanwhile, also prepare a guest room for me since I hope that through your prayers, I will be restored to you, right? Get ready, because by your prayers, I'm going to check in. I imagine Paul winking here. Uh, verse 23 and 24, right? Pay close attention, because these are final greetings, salutations, and we kind of overlook them. 
but nothing in the Bible is there by mistake, right? Remember, Epaphras is the one who helped Paul establish the church in Colossae. Um, here, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings, and so do Mark, that's important, John Mark, Aristostarchus, Damas, and Luke, my co-workers, right? You have to remember, Paul and Barnabas were essentially on a mission trip with Mark, and for whatever reason, Mark had gone home, whether it was um, for whatever reason it was, whether it was homesickness or burnout, we don't know. But Paul and Barnabas had argued what that should mean for him, like what should we do with him. But however it worked out, we see there here that Paul, Barnabas, and Mark are working together again, right? Now reconciled, writing to Philemon about the power of reconciliation. And then verse 25. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Why grace? Right? So he will show grace to Onesimus. Now, this is the only letter of Paul that doesn't mention Jesus' death and resurrection. And that is not a mistake. He doesn't need the words because he's acting it out. He has made himself the place where Onesimus and Philemon may be reconciled to God and to each other. He's standing in the gap. Christ's family is a new humanity, right? Colossians 3.10, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. A new humanity of partners who share together in God's mercy. Let's not be the team that's just in the huddle and never runs the play. So as Pastor Bud hurries to take over, I just want us to think about... <laughs> Who we can stand, who can we stand in the gap for, right? Who can we be a spiritual father for? Who does God want us to be reconciling within our own Christ family this morning? I don't really have any closings. I just figured you'd run up by now. <laughs> but thank you so much for, for hearing me this morning. And it's been a real blessing. I'm pretty blessed I don't owe y'all guys any money because he did good. So y'all can give a good report back, right? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Hey, uh, Ray, I'm going to put, put in the call to worship. Can you go to the last slide in the call to the worship, that last slide of the call to worship? Um, reconciled. That we, I pray today that you're reconciled to God, okay? That's important. That's why Jesus died on the cross. Is so that we could be reconciled to God. One of the lines in the sermon was, is that as Paul sent Onesimus back, Onesimus carries the letter himself. He carries it. And Philemon has the right to have him killed. So, Paul, I'm hoping this is a good letter because, <laughs> because my life is in the balance here. Onesimus has the right to have him killed or to put his brand on his forehead for the rest of his life and so he goes back i don't know we always understand the weight of our sin the consequences of our sins what the cost is but that's part of that when god redeemed us that word redeemed is such a powerful word because jesus paid the price so we could be reconciled to god and so one of the first things is for us to be reconciled to God, to live in that reconciliation, a relationship with God every day. We we're talking at men's breakfast today how what a blessing it is that we can talk to God all day long, that we can pray and we can talk to God. And that's because Jesus paid the price that he was reconciled. And so we live in that reconciliation, but then we are sent forth into the world to carry the ministry of reconciliation into a world. That doesn't even know that it's done anything wrong. Wow. So we give thanks to God who has reconciled us to himself through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Given us the ministry of reconciliation. Today I hope that in your heart you can feel both sides of that. Incredibly well done.
through the book, man oh man, what a glorious thing. Yes, we're thankful. Uh, I want to, Bailey, I'm asking you to come up and ask y'all to come meet me down here at the altar. We want to pray for y'all. Their journey, I, I'm a little, they're just, they're not engaged. They're not like, they're just starting to date, okay? And so a little bit, a little bit, this is, hey, this has been a little bit of figuring this out, okay? I'm a good, I'm good at it though. I am. Hey, but you know, you have ministry. He has ministry and y'all are here together today. We were just going to pray for y'all here. If y'all kneel down at the altar up there. Uh, and I'm going to invite those of you that would like to, to come join us up here to pray for them. When I do this, one of the things I'm asking is that if you come up that you're saying, I'm not just praying for this moment, but, but I'm going to put them on my prayer list. I'm going to be praying for, for, for him, you know, we're going to do our best to keep up with them and see see how God's working. So if you want to come meet me at the altar to pray, we're going to pray for them this morning.
asking Micah to lead us in our sending forth today because this first part of this, I hope that goes in your heart for a long time. That uh, it's always amazing. Can you go to that first thing there? Because this covers so much ground. This covers so much ground. You know, we've missed Gil over the last weeks, you know, him not being here. But he's a part of this, whether he's here or not. We know, just like Rhonda, thinking of Rhonda, those who have gone on in the faith, you know, they're here with us. They're a part of this. But it also covers when people are Baptists and we're Methodists and they have to go back to the Baptist thing. <laughs> Or who knows, maybe Pentecostal <laughs> could be in your future, you know. There was one service I ran, and about 60 kids got behind me. So I'm running around the church with a bunch of kids. So the next time, it, it was I am free, free to run, free to dance, you know. So I was free, so I ran. The next time in worship, they played that song. Debbie goes, you're not free. <laughs> Welch, my Pentecostal dreams, man, right there on the spot. <laughs> Glory to God. But, uh, you know, it's awesome because we're Christ's family. Amen. All across that spectrum. And for you to know that. So, even as you lead us in this, I pray that will sink into your heart. And you'll know week after week we're including you in this. For those of you watching online, you're included in this as well. Who are we? We are Christ's family. We have come to worship the Lord and to give him praise. Now we are sent by God to be fully devoted disciples of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. We ask you now to lead us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, you are sent. Amen. Amen. 